Okay, today I just wanted to make a video on how to get started with uh, color correction in Vegas Pro 15. This is just two uh, quick methods, uh, two quick ways you can do it to get started. And you can get results that, resu um, that rival what you can get in uh, Resolve. Uh, so here we go. So you go in, of course, the first step is to import your media. So go into import media. This is actually S-Log footage uh, that I shot with a Sony FS7 camera. So I'm just going to that drive right now, and I'm just going to grab the first clip. And we're going to, of course, import that, and there it is, and we drag it to the timeline. And uh, yes, we want to match the project video to our video settings, and that adjusts the frame rate and everything else. Um, I'm just going to trim this down a little bit real fast. And, um, oops, I accidentally touched the opacity there, so I'll bump that back up. So S-Log footage, when you first bring it in, it's going to look flat and washed out because the dynamic range from the camera is more than what the display monitor can show. So we have to um, put it into the right color space to be able to see it correctly. So anyway, so this is the first method. We go up into Project Properties and we set the pixel format to 32-bit floating full range. Um, we want to change the compositing gamma from linear to video at 2.22. We'll leave the ACES version at 1. Uh, by default, uh, the color space is at 2065, but we're going to set it to ACES CC, which stands for color correction. And for view transform, we're going to leave that at sRGB, which is a computer monitor. And rendering quality, we always change that to best. And then we go OK. Then from there, we go into the, oh, now you can see what it did. It, it looks horrific. It completely, it completely blew it out because it's not in the right color space. So then we go into the media properties, the second gear down there. And we go to S-Log2, S-Gamut, which is the uh, color space and gamma curve that I shot with. And watch what happens when we hit OK. So now it looks kind of like the scene look, pretty much. But now we can go into our FX and add our color correction and do our color correction. So we just go in and add the color corrector, which I like to use. And if you want to, let's say I want to kind of cool this down a little bit, I can just, in the mids, pull that toward the blue a little bit. And then I can come down here and play around with the saturation if I want more saturation, more color, or if I want to flatten it or even make it black and white. And uh, that's an adjustment I like to do. Another adjustment that I like to do, going back into FX, is the color curve. I've found it just really easy to use and add it here. OK. Now, there are highlights already kind of blown out in the right. So now I'm just going to pull down the, the, the shadows and the mids a little bit. And that, to me, looks fine. That looks like what the scene looked like, maybe even better than the scene. So that's basically the first method. You can also click this save snapshot and uh, I like doing that because I have an image that I can kind of reference and compare um, later with other methods that maybe I use. So the second method now is we're going to go in and import a clip again, the same one, the same exact one. We're dragging down to the timeline and yes with two match properties and I kind of shorten this up a little bit. And uh, here it's the same flat washed out image. This time we're going to go into the project properties and set it to 32-bit floating video levels. And then you notice when you do that, the composite gamma actually go, uh, goes to a video, but it ACES is dimmed out and doesn't work. It's disabled. Now it's, we still have a flat washed out image. Now notice that if we go into the media properties and I change the color space, it doesn't matter. It doesn't change anything because... ACES, the ACES workflow has been disabled. So it makes no difference what color space I put this in because I'm not in that ACES workflow. And we'll go OK and close out. But what I can do now is add a 3D LUT. Uh, so Sony has some already for this. So I come in here and use the LUT filter, add, go OK. And then I browse to, a, I set that to best. Uh, and then I browse to where I have my LUT, which you can download if you just do a, a search on the internet, you can download 3D LUTs for S-Log footage. And um, it's, I actually sometimes call it a look profile. So you might have to search under look profiles. And here they are. And I'll choose this LC709 type A and go OK. And you notice right away the image is brought 
to life. Now one great thing about the LEP filter is it has this strength slider and so you can actually adjust the strength of the LUT, which is, is a very nice uh, feature to have. So just adjust that to your taste. And then you can go into FX and add even more, do more corrections. I like to, uh, again, add the color curves and go add, OK. And I might just bring up the highlights a tad, and then I'll just pull down the shadows and the mids. And there you go. You had what was a flat, washed out image, and now you've got a really nice image. So this is just two quick ways to get started with color correcting in Sony, not Sony, but Magic's uh, Vegas Pro. And so I hope you found this video helpful. So take care and have a great day.